Hey everybody, welcome to my multi-part series on Power Apps Component Libraries, specifically enhanced properties. So we're gonna start this out with an overview and get into the data properties portion of the new enhanced properties. These are currently in preview uh, as of today, which is February 2nd, 2025. Super excited for them. I think they enhance components, component libraries quite a bit. So excited to show off some of the features that are available in all four of them to you throughout the course of this series. My name is David Warner. I work for Quizitive. I'm a big fan of the community and collaborating with all of you, Microsoft MVP, Microsoft Certified Trainer. So let's get into it. What's the agenda? Well, we're going to talk about enhancing Power Apps one property at a time. So we're going to go over a, a component library review, just kind of overview of what those are, uh, what they are. We're going to have an overview of enhanced property types. So I'll walk through in this initial video, all four of them. And then we're going to get into the first demo of data properties. And these are the most familiar because they are some the most similar to what we currently have today in production. And then I'll go over what's next, a preview of function, action, and event properties. So what is a component and component library? Well, they're essentially reusable functionality within Power Apps. So components can be built within an individual app that allows you to reuse the functionality you build in that component. But then a component library lives outside of any individual app. And that means that the components inside of that library can be imported into multiple apps. When you create a component in a single app, it's only reusable within that app. But a component library essentially acts like a central repository. So you can inherit it and import it to multiple apps, and then you only have to change it in one place. So it's that one single source of truth. You make the change in your component library, and then all the apps that use it get alerted to the update uh, that is available. They can update and get the most recent features and functionality that are available in it. So lots of coolness there. Uh, we'll go over some more details about that here soon. Now let's talk about these new enhanced properties. So we have four of them. All right, there's four new properties, data properties, function properties, action properties, and event properties. Now those last three function, action, and event, they have optional parameters. So we'll talk more about that as we get into the demos, but you can extend the functionality of them. You can make them a little bit more malleable and dynamic by passing in parameters and arguments and stuff like that. So let's talk about data properties first. These are the most similar to what we currently have today. You pretty much identify a data property to be an input or an output, which means that you're passing information into the component from the app input or output, meaning that the component is passing information over to the app. And you can identify what the data type is. So you could say it's going to be a text or an image or a record. There's a whole plethora of choices there for data type, but it's pretty basic. You're just passing data back and forth between the component and the app. Pretty simple. Next up is function properties. Now, these are just simply related to logic. It works more like your programmatic functions uh, and you pass in parameters. This is our first one where we can see the use of optional parameters. So we'll see that inside of our demo. Uh, now these can be input or output, which means that the functions can be executed within the app and called within the uh, component, or uh, the function can be executed within the component, but called from the app. Uh, but you can't use any behavior like examples. You can't access variables. Uh, you can't do any resets or selects. You're just using basic functionality that gets returned to whatever is calling the function. Pretty basic stuff. We'll see in a good example of it though. Next up is action properties. Now action properties work almost identically to the output function property with the exception that you can actually chain expressions, you can manipulate collections or variables, and you have access to behavioral experiences. So you can actually invoke the clickable event of something within the component. So for example, uh, if you have a button in a component and you create an action property, that actually connects to that button somewhere else in your app, you can invoke that on select experience. You don't he need to actually click the button inside of the component to actually invoke the functionality that is behind the on select of that button. So again, very cool means that essentially you define the logic in your component, then in your app can invoke that logic as long as it is available in the action property. And again, it's got optional parameters, so you can kind of extend its functionality and make it a little bit more dynamic. Lastly, we've got event properties. Now, these again are very similar to the function properties in the input category. So it's much like the action properties were the replica of function properties or output function properties. The in invent property is pretty much the same thing. It is an input function, but gives you access 
to that behavioral experience. So you can manipulate collections, variables, uh, you can define logic that uh, allows you to change the behavior and experiences. So again, while the functions are just basic functionality, just performing uh, whatever it is that's being told to do without access to variables, event properties can have those optional parameters and again, have access to things like on select, on change. Uh, and it's, it's really cool. Remember, it's like a callback essentially to the app. So within your component, when a function happens or when a, an event happens within your component, you can essentially alert the app that, hey, this thing happened. A button has been clicked. Now you in the app need to go do something else. And we'll see what that looks like in, in a demo. So let's dive deeper into our first collection of properties, which is your data properties. Uh, these have two varieties, input, output. And again, these are the most similar to what we have today, which is just input, output, and we define a data type. They're just now called data. So what can they do? Well, they're for simple passing of values into a component, right? Uh, you can define the data type. It can be text, numbers, colors, booleans, whatever, image, for example. You return values out of a component. That's the output. So the first passing values into a component, input. Uh, returning values out of a component, output. Again, simple data, badge image. We're going to see an example here. Uh, text, numbers, colors, booleans, just simple data. And so you can also sort of manage simple state between the two. We'll see that in a demo here. So very simple stuff, but it's still val valuable and useful. What it can't do, it can't trigger actions. Uh, so navigation or submitting forms, resets, selects, etc. And you're not going to be able to modify global variables uh, directly within these or affect controls outside of the component. Uh, you're just simply passing data in and out uh, that either the app can use on the output or the uh, component can use on the input. So uh, let's look at a demo of this. So what we're going to do, what is our use case? It is we're going to display some badges. So I'm a big fan of the community. We have a community program called the Recognition Program. So if you contribute to the community in a variety of ways, you can earn badges from Credly. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an input property that allows us to request from the component the image that we want to see of a specific badge. And then we're going to use an output property to return that image uh, from the component to the app. So it kind of demonstrates the flow between the app and the component using simple input and output properties. All right, so here we are in Power App Studio. Now let me set some context and identify some things that we've already done. Um, I've got a number of components that are gonna be for all my videos here. Uh, we're gonna focus here on the data properties today. Uh, to show just the input output. I've also added in some media. So we want to display our badges within our screens in our app. So I've pre-uploaded some images here of badges for things like uh, SharePoint Hackathon that's coming up here soon. Uh, if I click on that, we can see that here. Uh, that badge is going to be coming up here soon. Pretty excited for that. There's also the Powerful Devs, uh, oops, which is right there. So we see that right there. Powerful Devs event coming up here soon. I'll include all kinds of links to these in the show notes. But if you're watching, this uh, at this actual moment in time in early February, these are going to be coming up some, some cool events uh, that we can do. So I'm just storing the images here uh, inside of my component library for now. You could always be pulling these images in from somewhere else, but for purposes of the demo, it's just simple enough to be able to reference them. Now I've got my component for data properties. I've got nothing being displayed because this particular component, I don't actually need anything to be displayed. I'm just using the component to essentially be a broker uh, between uh, my component, which is gonna live in a component library, and my images. And I'm gonna use properties for that. Now the way you do that is you create custom properties over here in the property panel of your component. So I can click new custom property. And we see that our property type choices are now much larger, right? We've got those four that we talked about, data, function, event, and action. So I'm going to be keeping data. I've got a couple here that have a pre-built for us, uh, but you can choose the input or output, right? So we know what that is now, input or output, and then the data type. So I've already created them just to save a little bit of time. You can click on the data type here to bring them up. So this is just simply called input badge request. Uh, which is going to be provided into my component from the app side. So this particular uh, this particular uh, property is exposed to me from the app that I could provide the information on. All right. Then I've also got my output badge property. Again, this is going to be identified as a data type. Uh, excuse me, an image data type. And so I'm going to send back to the app an image. And I define the logic here. 
Uh, so let me do a couple of things. Uh, the first one is text. So when you click on the actual property name, like I'm doing right there, hovering over it, of course, it takes us to that item in the formula bar. Uh, when you go to the properties on the property dropdown, we see that both of these are available to us. They're both available to us. So let me first go into the input. And what I have is I have a community contributor. So I'm setting that as a default value. You don't have to have anything in here as a default value. It could just simply remain blank and that's fine. But what I'm doing is I'm providing it with community contributor. So how does that equate to my output? In my app, I will populate this particular property with the badge that I would like it to have. Okay, so then how does the component know to send back one of those three images that I have available right here? How does it know to send back one of those three uh, badges? Well, that is where the output property comes into play. So what I'm doing is I'm using a simple switch statement, which just simply says, hey, take a value. And in this case, my value is the input badge. So I'm taking the input badge property that gets filled in and populated by the app. And then I'm saying, if it's one of these three things, uh, return them. And I've, I, of course, could have you know a, a, a you know, default that will go if it doesn't. You could use if statements if you wanted to. I'm just using a simple switch statement. But effectively, what happens is it takes in the value I pr provided from the app and it checks it against one of these three. And if it is one of those three, it's going to send me back that particular badge. All right. So how does that look? We can test this, of course, within our components because we do have a screens uh, tree view here. So I've got a data properties screen that I've created. I've already added my data props component. So this is the component. You can add your custom components here. So I added my data properties and just simply renamed it. Uh, and that's what we have here. And when I click on that and I click on the properties, you can see that that is available to me. Okay, so uh, everything's looking good, of course. Now, this particular component, again, doesn't display anything. I'm just using it as a broker. So what I wanna do is I want to create an image. I'm going to insert an image, all right? And for the image property, I'm going to set that to my data props component dot, and then I am going to set it to the output badge image. Because again, that's uh, the output property is what's going to supply me that image. So I'm going to click that. And what happens is now it shows me the powerful devs. Now, how or why is it showing that? Well, if I click on the component on my screen, right? I click on that right there and I go over to the input badge request. That's the input property. I go there. It is supplying powerful devs. So now if, if I change this powerful devs value, which I had pre-populated uh, over to community contributor, we should see that. We see the community contributor. So exactly what is happening? How is this happening? Well, again, what I'm doing is on my component, which I dropped onto my screen, it has that input and that's why it shows up. Now the output doesn't show up here because it's simply not a property that I'm calling. Right, it's, it's not something that I can populate with a value, but it is something that I can reference as an output. And so that's what's happening. And when I click here, uh, you'll notice that it says when I have that selected, the data type is an image because inside of my component, when I go to the actual, uh, when I go over to the component, sorry, right here, you'll click on components, click on component, go to the output, I'm essentially saying whatever the value of that input property is that's coming from the app, check it. If it's one of these things, send that back. So I could simply uh, take SharePoint Hackathon, go back to my screen, I'll close this up, click on the image, uh, and or excuse me, click on the component, go to the input, which I'm already on, and I'm gonna change this now to the SharePoint Hackathon. And that gets returned. So again, a real simple example of exchange of data, right? I'm passing information into my component and then inside the component, I'm using that information. Now in this case, I'm using both of them together. You don't have to use both of them together. You could have an input without an output. You could have an output without an input. 
I'm just simply showing how they're being used together so that you can illustrate and understand the concept that one, they exist, how they are used, and two, that you could use them together if you want. So super cool. Again, kind of what we have today. So probably, hopefully nothing new, but if you're new to components and properties, hopefully you've learned something. So let's go back to our slides and let's get some key takeaways here on data property. So again, they allow input and output uh, to exchange within a component. Um, they can help keep things uh, consistent, right? So if you've got a collection of icons or logos or whatever, you could create a component that includes all of those things and then all your apps could inherit it from a component library. Uh, but again, they're not for triggering actions. Uh, you could use an actions property for that. We'll get into that. So some pretty cool functionality. Next up, check out the next video. We're gonna talk about function properties. So these are cool because they allow you to essentially invoke function either within the component or the app that can be called one or the other. So super cool. See you in the next video. Thanks everybody.